In this video, we will outline 16 catastrophic mistakes that will completely ruin your Dragon's Dogma 2 playthrough if you engage in them. Okay, maybe not that dramatic, but make sure to avoid doing these mistakes to have the best time possible. Starting off with the first mistake on the list. If you think that there is no loot right in front of you, there is loot. Yes, loot is everywhere in this game. It can be found under objects that you'll have to move away, but there is an additional layer because loot can also be found inside of objects that will initially just look like random placeholder objects that won't contain anything, but they will in fact have loot inside, as you see here. You have to destroy everything in this game, not just enemies, no, 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 no. Everything to find hidden loot. But while loot might be hidden, campfires are not. In fact, the world is ridden with campfires, hence why mistake number two on the list is underutilizing campfires. In Dragon's Dogma 2, there is a mechanic called the Lost Gauge. This mechanic essentially entails that the more you get hit or die in combat, the less HP you will subsequently have for your next battles. So your HP bar gets smaller and smaller over time, naturally, and this is the game's way of stimulating you to rest. And while resting will cost you gold and the trip back to the city, you will quickly notice that the world is ridden with campfires that you can use to rest. Use these spots as much as possible with a proper camping kit and you can adventure for a very, very long time without having to return to town. These spots and the camping kits are amazing. But while setting camp is nice and all, you want to make sure to not skip dinner. Hence, mistake number three is skipping dinner. Look at that delicious food, and in this game, you get great buffs when you eat at, say, your campfires. And there are different levels of benefits that you get from eating these as indicated in the menu. Some of them have a bunch of pluses, as you can see. The buffs that cooking gives you while chilling at a campfire with your buddies are excellent. More damage, more defense, more stamina, faster recovery rates, to name a few buffs. Typically, the more Burgundian type of food or aged food will give you the better buffs. So keep an eye out for those. Don't forget your meals. Don't forget your meals times too, because mistake number four on the list is making your food go bad. Your food will get rotten if you don't use it in time. And rotten food can in fact still be consumed for our weirdos out there, but the buffs are terrible as you see, and you get sick as well. So make sure to eat your food, even if it's just in battle, to heal some HP, or making a meal out of them through cooking at your campfires to get those buffs in time. Rotten food also means no value anymore in selling them nothing. You have lost that expensive steak forever. Don't hoard your food, it will spoil, just like the world is ridden with spoils. Hence why mistake number 5 is a very important mistake to avoid not exploring enough. The world is incredibly dense with loot and this time I'm not even talking about the hidden loot. Exploring will make you rich in no time. Literally, there is gold to be found everywhere. You just need to use your eyes. Your map essentially needs to get rid of all the unrevealed spots as much as possible. Just see it like a game of Minesweeper. But the world is also an important facilitator for giving plenty of loot to enhance your equipment or make amazing potions or getting otherwise useful loot. Loot is everywhere, in houses, outside, places where the sun doesn't shine, just everywhere. It might sound obvious, but exploring is very rewarding in Dragon's Dogma 2, maybe more so than your average RPG. But with all that loot, you will quickly fill up your bags, and we don't want to have too much stuff in our bags now, do we? As that is exactly mistake number 6. If your encumbrance rate gets too high, say you become heavy or very heavy, you will become slower and slower, and your stamina consumption gets much more aggressive. You will tire out all the time basically, and it's going to be an unpleasant time for you to say the least. Everything slows down, and in combat you will fall behind your team. So the tip here is to make sure to distribute your loot to you and your party wherever necessary to get a good spread of weight across the entire team, and deposit everything unwanted for the moment in your storage box. Combine your materials as much as possible as well to reduce weight. Combining your stuff is basically mandatory in this game because it also turns raw materials into more useful items like potions. Or even better, get a logistician pawn in your party. They make life a lot easier for you as they will combine your materials automatically. And after managing your weight and doing all of that, you will be a very happy person and you can now move like a free bird through the world again. But while doing so, make sure to not ignore your pawns as they possess a lot of valuable knowledge. Ignoring your pawns can be a very costly mistake, which is why it comes in clutch at number 7. This RPG is not like other RPGs. 
whatever NPCs say to you is important, and naturally even more so for those that surround you all the time. Just listen to them. Your pawns are not here to give you headaches and ruin your day through uninspired repeated dialogue. No, they give you solid advice. In combat, it can be things like resistances and weaknesses of enemies, or steering you away from doing a certain action, or setting up for combos. And outside of combat, they can lead the way for you to important NPCs or hint you the next steps in a certain quest chain. They can even path you to treasure or just give general useful hints and yeah, life advice. However, your adventures with your non-main pawns should be short-lived. Because mistake number 8 is all about that. You don't keep your non-main pawns around too long. See, your non-main pawns, so the two additional pawns that you've gotten from other people, don't level up with you and your main pawn. They get obsolete rather quickly, unfortunately. So you have to keep replacing your non-main pawns all the time, through say the rift or by finding someone in the wild that has nothing better to do than to join you. The level discrepancy can get big real quick, especially early on. See here, level seven, level 12. Yeah, so keep dismissing and hiring, dismiss and hire, dismiss and hire to make sure your party is as strong as possible at every point in the game. What you don't dismiss and hire, however, is your main pawn. Hence why forgetting about your main pawn, even though it's an NPC fueled by AI, is a very costly mistake that comes in at number 9. For those already familiar with the previous installment, this might not come as a surprise, but everyone new to this game might skip the idea of fueling this AI figure in your team. But the AI is not dumb in this game. Your main pawn becomes very useful in fact, and hence why you accordingly want to keep learning it the right skills and roster a set of up-to-date skills appropriately to your Arisen. But that is not where it ends. Keep giving your main pawn the proper equipment and gear, rings, everything. Basically, long story short, Treat your main pawn like you do with your Arisen. Okay, one more mistake about the pawns at number 10 because it is just too addicting, not using them through the command system. Outside of combat and their dialogue, you can also directly manipulate what your pawns do with these commands. And outside of the logical actions like requesting help to say getting healed, you can for example use one of your pawns to do something that you as your Arisen can do. Say you are a melee character that can't access a certain place at a certain time, well, just instruct your mage to levitate and get it for you. Easy peasy. Just like it should be easy to have a functioning lantern at all times. But your lantern will run out of fuel eventually. And if it happens in the night, well, let's say you're doomed. Especially if your party also doesn't have any lanterns. If you don't have lantern oil, that is though. Which will be a very costly mistake for you to make. And it comes in at number 11 on this list. Thankfully, lantern oil doesn't weigh that much, so you can always keep a few with you to make sure you have sufficient light when you go out in the night while managing your weight capacity properly. But talking about properly doing things, using wake stones mindfully, because using these carelessly is mistake number 12. Wake stones revive you fully when you die, with a full HP bar, even if your loss gauge was huge, so they're incredibly powerful. But naturally, there's only going to be a limited number of them in the game, through wake stone shards. If you get three of these shards, then the game automatically combines them for you into the usable wake stone. You get an item called a dragon gauge relatively early on in your playthrough, and this is a very useful item, and you want to make sure to not forget about it. Use it, and it will display all shards in close proximity or notify you of the opposite. With these marked on the map, it becomes very easy to get them. Now, using wake stones, however, is another thing. You don't want to use your wake stone when you die to a random mob in the open world while your loss gauge is already at its maximum like in this clip. Using them like that is pretty much a complete waste since the game auto saves very frequently and you would only lose a few seconds at most by just loading your last save. So basically, use your wake stones with care. Maybe in those scary fights, for example. On the topic of useful items, though, golden beetle throws and seeker stones which come in at mistake number 13 overlooking them golden trove beetles give you 0.15 kg of additional weight capacity so you might disregard them and see them as complete trash because what is 0.15 kg right well it is 0.15 kg however the world is yet again ridden with these things so make sure to pick each one of them and cumulatively speaking you will get huge amounts of extra weight capacity real fast which helps out tremendously with your encumbrance rate seeker tokens on the other hand are tied to a bunch of rewards and some of these without spoiling too much can be really good starting really early on even with the reward that requires only five tokens these aren't generally much harder to find though and the mistake here is in the literal sense they are hidden 
very well hidden sometimes to the point you have to investigate every nook and cranny of the map to consistently find them but you definitely want to do so and moving around all the time can be a bit tedious though for some players to the point mistake 14 has to be on this list as well forgetting about the fantastic fast travel services in this game there is in fact fast travel in dragon's dogma 2 even though some people might think it was marketed otherwise and there's a good amount of it either through the ox car service which will get you to a select number of towns and spots on the map without you having to move but you can get rated mid-travel so it's not really necessarily always going to be the definition of a comfortable trip let's say but hey free xp alternatively the fairy stones are amazing as well when you have them some of them are in fact sold by merchants and they can instantly teleport you to a city with a port crystal port crystals are these purple things so make sure you utilize these do not delay certain adventures as much as you want but maybe you're an anti-fast travel puritanist and you just like walking in the nature and the stunning visuals of this game what isn't stunning however is when you buy the wrong gear for your vocation which is mistake number 15 on the list this is a very easy and classic mistake to make when you're comparing stats and you see those juicy blue numbers but then you don't pay attention to these little sneaky red icons which indicate that these gear pieces are not compatible with your vocation a classic mistake it happens life goes on Mistake number 16 might have a lot more consequences for you though, and it's not considering your environment in fights. For example, throwing rocks to powerful bosses can help you out tremendously. These can stagger and crowd control them and tip the tides of the battle in your favor completely. Or you can use elevation for example to get rid of bosses quickly by pulling them save from a cliff with one of your skills and let gravity do its thing accordingly. Those are just two examples and if you make sure to always pay attention to potential environmental advantages that you might have, you might win fights you're maybe not supposed to win yet. Thank you for watching. There's one more mistake by the way, not giving this video a like and not being subscribed to this guy for more juicy Dragon's Dogma 2 content. Make sure to rectify that mistake right now.